Hello there my RPG lovers and welcome to another video. Pine is just around the corner. This open world action adventure was supposed to be released back in August for Nintendo Switch and PC but it got delayed for October 10th. And while it's definitely releasing on Steam and GOG on October 10th, Switch users will have to wait a bit more. Thrillbound announced that they have to delay the launch on Switch for one more month to give it the launch it deserves. The team behind this game is really small, so that extra month of development will be probably spent on fixing bugs and polishing the game. I still have high hopes and judging by all we could see so far, it does have the potential to be a fun game with some really interesting mechanics. If you've been following my channel in the past few months, you probably know that I tried to cover everything that I could find about this game. We talked about different mechanics, reputation systems, how the open world works, platforming and things like that. Since the game is getting really closer to that release date, we're gonna refresh our memory a bit and talk about everything we know so far, but we also have some brand new updates. Pine started as a Kickstarter project back in 2017. It's described as an open world action adventure simulation. The game is set on an island called Albarmare, which is inhabited by a lot of different species. We had the opportunity to see different biomes like forest, desert and a snowy mountain. There are 6 biomes in total and the overall size of this island looks pretty decent. We recently discovered that we also have mounts in this world and it's not logical to include mounts if the world map is small, right? You play as a human named Hugh who is looking for a new home for his tribe. This is a predetermined character so you can't customize his looks. You can choose to work for different factions or clans as they are called in this game. There are 5 clans in total, each with their own villages. Cariblins are these moose like creatures, Faxel resemble foxes, Crockers are pretty much self explanatory, Gobbledews are these birds, and Litters are lizard like creatures. All these species have systematic behavior, but what's really interesting about them is the evolution mechanic. There is a generic algorithm that will make all these species evolve, so that will be really fun to see. By the way, humans are inferior to other species in this game, so you're pretty much among the dumbest living beings in this world. <laughs> Unexpected role-playing potential I see. Anyway, you can choose to work for these clans and help them improve their villages, but you can also destroy them if you wish. And we could see how destroyed villages disappear from the map completely, which is also a nice touch. All of your actions will probably have an effect on your reputation with these clans. We could see how the player can use a special item to call for help when raiding a village. You will probably need a higher reputation with certain faction to buy this item. This particular example here is the proof that you can piss off almost all clans, which means you'll have a lot of hostile affinities. As you're watching these clips, you probably noticed that Zelda Breath of the Wild had a huge influence on this game. The world definitely looks really open and explorable with no invisible walls and you can climb almost everywhere. Unfortunately there is no climbing system like in Breath of the Wild, but we have to lower our expectations a bit because like I said, Throwbound is not a huge team. Another huge aspect of this game that we could see a couple of times before is platforming. It seems like this world is filled with puzzles that you can solve by doing some platforming in the open world, but we also have things called vaults in the game. They are basically dungeons of pine, but they are related to the main quest somehow. If I had to guess, these vaults will contain some advanced puzzles and platforming. The gameplay in general changed drastically over the years and it's really noticeable like you can see in this example. I wasn't sold on the game when I saw the older videos, but as you can see now the gameplay looks a lot smoother. The AI system in this game should also be really good, which is really important in a game like this. The clan system, evolution mechanic and similar features could hardly work if the AI is not good. Ever since the first videos about Pine, Twirlbound always mentioned how they are trying to create a great AI system. Enemies in fights will try to adapt to the players, so for example if you dodge a lot they will try to be more aggressive and things like that. But not just in combat, the AI looks promising in general and let's not forget that Pine is supposed to be a simulation among other things. The crafting system also has some cool ideas. There are unique crafting items that certain NPCs drop and you don't actually need to kill them in order to acquire those crafting materials. Some of these crafting materials can help your village like this construction knowledge. This is probably one of the ways to improve the village of your choice. We could also see a glimpse of the economy system since traders have different prices for everything. In the newest update we can see, well actually here's some procedural combat music. According to developers it checks what faction you're fighting, how many of them and combines the layers of their own musical themes for combat. Here are some examples. This 
way of implementing combat music sounds really interesting actually and I don't think I saw something similar before. Anyway, this should be enough information to get you interested in this new game. I plan to cover Pine with more videos and I will make a review that should come out on the release date so if you're interested in that make sure you subscribe. I do in-depth guides, news and reviews. Special thanks to my patrons and YouTube exclusive members and if you as well want to become one of them, all the links are in the description. I'll see ya in the next one.